What's up, my friends? We're here today to talk about how the big score is a big scam. And guess what? Uh, speaking of big scams, I dropped an entire roll of toilet paper into the toilet, man. And I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it. I just wasted that. It's wasted now. Oh, you kidding me? Everything's so expensive now, and I just wasted a roll of toilet paper, which is exactly what I would need to wipe up this garbage set. <laughs> Anyways, hold on. I'm going to share the live stream link in the Discord first things first, and then we're going to take a look at the big score. The set that Wizards said was going to be the follow-up story for Thunder Junction, and I'm sure it will have... So many amazing details that add fully on to the story. It definitely won't feel like a loosely cobbled together pile of garbage or anything, right? That's definitely not going to be what happens. We're going to look through it and be like, wow, this is a very fulfilling follow-up story to the original story. I very much am glad that I read this. All right. Or I, I'm glad that I looked at these cards, I should say. All right. Let's see here. Uh, bam. Bam. Get the chat switched over. Perfect. Let's do our hellos. What up, Millmaster, Gossett, Eng, Ralph, Zircon, Shelton, Buck, Brent, Potts, Doomblade, Felonius T, Jess, 104, Jojo, Ned, Carly, Millmaster, James, John. And there we go. There we go. I got all the names. I got all the names. Oh, wait, no, I missed Bolt Falcon with the Super Chat TP fund. Hey, thanks, Bolt Falcon. That's enough to replace the roll of toilet paper and take an extra roll with me when I take Carly to Niagara Falls. I'm going to take her to Niagara Falls so that we can go to Clifton Hill, but I'm going to have to put up with a lot of her shit, so I'll make sure to bring an extra roll of toilet paper. That's a joke just the part about to deal with her shit. The real reason I'm bringing toilet paper is to watch her dry her tears after she cries at how much better I do at the arcade games when we go to the arcade. <laughs> All right, we're still dealing with these awful markers, but help should be on the way. All right. Bob Falcon, you're Lord of the Board, buddy. What up, Beasley? What's going on, Templar? What's up, Loco? What's going down, Brent? What's going leftwards, Standard? Hello, Jugglum. I got me some grape Kool-Aid. You have good arcade skills. Psh, psh. I'm going to win. I'm going to dominate. Um, no mercy. No mercy towards my disabled wife, right? If it seems like she's going to win, I'm going to elbow her in the ribs, Bo. Bam. I said Bo. All right. Apparently, I'm explaining this to Bo Falcon. Yo, Bo. I'm going to chisel her ribs, bro. I'm going to stick my arm like this and go, bam. And, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, try winning now. That's right. You lay on the ground and cry. I'm going to win it at mole smacking. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So, so. <laughs> Bo Falcon says, let me know when you want to be butt pampered again, Carly. Bro, that extra super duper deluxe toilet paper has, has ruined Carly. Now she keeps a secret stash of ultra deluxe. Like, seriously, man. I'm over here scraping my poor asshole with a Brillo pad. And, like, look, Carly's logging on right now to put it on the wish list. Bone Falcon, stop it. Stop spoiling my woman. When I went to the grocery store to pick up that toilet paper, first of all, the lady at the counter was like, what's going on here? And I'm like, oh, my fan said I'm full of shit. And then I said, no, the real reason I got this is for my wife, but I'm not going to let her have it. You know why? And I said to the guy beside me, I'm like, this is three-ply, bro. You can't let these women get all uppity, right? You can't let them, like, you got to keep them at a certain level. They can't have too much luxury, right? Or they get out of hand. So there's no way I'm going to let my wife have three-ply. Are you with me, buddy? 
he was not with me. He was he was like, you're on your own. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? What, are you a three-plier too? Sorry, Lottie. da All right, well, whatever. I'm still not giving it to my wife. <laughs> Speedwagon Super Chat says, Magus of the Wheel or Ruin Grinder? What the hell's Ruin Grinder? Is that... Is that the hooker that you pay to rub up on your junk, bro? Uh, let's see here. Ruin grinder. Yeah, any day now, gatherer. One red and five for a seven-four with menace. When it dies, each player can discard their hand and draw seven cards. And it's got mountain cycling, too. I don't know, man. Gut says Magus. My gut says Magus. Millmaster says I pee sitting down, but he left out the part where I'm sitting on his mom's face while I do it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a gentleman. I sit on your mom's face because that's how she likes it. And I fucking stick my soft dick up or well, just, just the hole. I stick it into your mom's fucking nostril, bro. How do you think I pay my bills doing this YouTube shit? Nobody gives me nothing here. So yeah. Up your mom's nose with a rubber hose, except it's not rubber, it's flesh, and it's my hose. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Doomblade Super Chat says, Yay, I can't wait for the aftermath of Thunder Junction. I'll be at work, so at least I won't see the garbage artwork. But I'll, but I'll have to deal with the text. Bet you most of the cards have no flavor. You just touched on one of the big problems with saying that this is a set that continues the story. There's no flavor, and the artwork is disparate as hell. But you know what? You're lord of the board. You kicked Bolt Falcon right in the sack, which is what he deserves for enabling Carly's three-ply. Like, for real, man. I work hard to demoralize my disabled wife and keep her in her place. And you're going to go ahead and splurge on the... Um, you know what, man? I'm gonna go and pick I'm gonna go and pick the three ply. I'm gonna go and pick this fancy this fancy toilet paper up and then I'm gonna sell it on the street, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna record myself asking people, hey bada bada, who got a dollar? Who wants to buy this toilet paper? Just so my stupid wife can't have it. <laughs> Maybe this marker will work better. Let's try this one. Let's try seeing red. Oh yeah, no, this is gonna work. This is gonna work. All right, much better. Look at that, it's legible. Why does the vault logo look like a Star Trek ship? Just shut up and buy it. Also the vault flew into outer space, so it maybe it is, maybe it's, maybe that's John, John Luke Picard's chrome dome, bro. You ever think about that? You ever think about that? Sell it to the homeless. That's right. What do you got? You guys go beg for some money so you can buy this toilet paper off me so I won't let my wife have it. <laughs> Gianna, yeah, it's red. You seeing red? Are you getting angry? Are you getting angry? Is the story going to continue on the same plane? No. No, not at all. Not at all. There is no way. Uh, Doomblades membership message. Here's my extra five bucks for more toilet paper after the diary crap stain of a set. I can't wait for the furry land to come around. Wait, what? That's a membership message. That doesn't have no five bucks on it. What kind of scam are you pulling? Huh? You think just because wizards lies to me all the time that I can't tell lies? Huh? A little, listen, listen, you want to talk about how bad the Thunder Junction story is? Me and Carly started talking about the second weekend of Bernie's movie. And I realized that the weekend, the second weekend of Bernie's movie is more logically consistent than Magic's current writing. The second weekend of Bernie's, where they find Bernie's corpse and reanimate it with voodoo magic, is more internally consistent with its own rules and story writing than Wizards of the Coast's fantasy epic, bro. For real. For real. It's insane. Rain, do I have a favorite baked good? Um, that's a good question. 
it depends. Sometimes I like like a flaky pastry that has maybe maybe a little bit a little bit of like flavor sauce in the middle, some kind of jammy something, or um, there are these like cream horns that are pastry that have some cream in the middle, or a nice butter tart. So I don't have an automatic favorite, um, really. Yeah. I got a number, a number that are roughly tied. Used a pigeon, not a chicken. That's right, Bo. But the thing is, they made, they made the re, like they, they thought it all out. It all follows the logical consistency. It's, it's ridiculous. Jammy Dodgers are okay, Millmaster. Actually, I tried those, those British cookies. They're all right, bro. They're all right. I'm not saying shortbread cookies. Eh. The short, I've, where can you find epic shortbread? I feel like I've never had epic shortbread in my life anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Speedwagon, you're like, croissants. Look at you, you fucking fancy, fancy Frencher. You're French kissing everybody. Oh, Doomblade, what do you mean, Lies? The membership is five bucks. Did you renew it today? Did you renew it today? Your membership message doesn't count as that. That's why I was confused. But if you're just like, I also have a membership that counts as $5 and I'm trying to say it's applied towards this. You don't get to decide that. I decide what to do with the money. I'm going to fucking use that membership money to buy a ball scrub and then I'm not going to wash my balls with it. Fuck you, right? I'm going to pour it all over the toilet paper that Bow Falcon's getting for Carly and then I'm going to fucking light it on fire and dance around it. <laughs> Can we focus? Can we focus on the important story of the big score from Thunder Junction? I'd like you to note Exhibit A, the Legion Extruder, extruding a dump out your butt. One red and one artifact, when it enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target. Two and tap, sack another artifact, create a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token. When the vault door opened, ancient war machines rumbled to life. Well, no, by the logic of this, it would just set something on fire and not have any ancient war machines because you have to feed something into it to make the war machines but when you gave us the written story it just said the space baby was in the vault and then the vault flew away but this is adding a lot of depth to the world james miller says here's a fiver to make up for the scam who's slinging good fantasy novels right now i don't know who's writing new current fantasy that's amazing i haven't kept up to speed on that stuff so I don't know, man. I don't know. But you know what I realized? Uh, not properly themed up. Here we go. Yeehaw, dummies. Y'all like the set? Millmaster says, used for coquane only. Coquane. <laughs> Whoa. Let's go get the moonshine. So this Legion Extruder actually has probably some of the most flavor the entire set does. And it definitely feels like a mythic, doesn't it, guys? Doesn't it? This definitely wasn't an uncommon in the original set or anything. They're like, this has to be rare level. Two damage for two mana, and you can sack other artifacts to make a 3-3? Three, three? Wow! This screams mythic rare. It's definitely not a jumped up uncommon or anything. It tweaks my ball bag so hard that they went, every card's a mythic! How is it a mythic? How is it a mythic? Surprised they didn't add cowboy hat counters? Well... There's no cowboy hats on these. You know why? Because this is clearly from the fucking Brothers War. This is clearly artwork from the Brothers War. And all the, the war machines they have going on there. Look at it. It screams it. It screams it. But nope. It was in the Fomori Vault. Oh, wow. I hope that all the artwork doesn't feel like random leftover artwork that was just shoved in. Oh, yeah. Let's cover this genius writing. The flavor text writers at Wizards of the Coast are brilliant like this is next level amazing the great this guy was in the vault by the way this is the story of the big score so remember after the vault was opened a guy tied somebody up and grabbed his hat oh but look he's putting thunder into his hat or something with yellow hands oh okay maybe the flavor text will make it better you think because you've mapped the land you own the land you own an idea nothing more This is like, okay, let me get this straight. 
you create a world where you say there's no previous inhabitants because you want to avoid the indigenous thing. And then you hire cultural consultants to create indigenous characters who aren't indigenous because they come from another world. So the Atten aren't from Thunder Junction, but they are the indigenous people of your world. But there are no indigenous. But also, don't steal the land from the indigenous. Also, you only own an idea. You can't own ideas, right? Uh, like, oh, I had the idea of having a sandwich. I own that idea. Nobody else can have the idea of having a sandwich. And it's just like, what great writing that adds to the overall story of the world. This is really, really cool. Look at me. I'm a guy like I'm the good guy. I took all the sheriff's badges and put them on my chest <laughs> and tied them up. You own an idea. You own a worthless brain. This is stupid. Like, who thinks this is cool? Who thinks this is cool? Who reads this flavor text and is like, yeah, what? You can't own ideas and you can own land. You think just because you came to this uninhabited land, set up a society, built yourself a, like a, an actual place for everybody to live, you're working together and living off the land, you think you own it? Nuh-uh, because of politics and stuff. You just own an idea. Wow, wizards, you're so smart. And this is like, you are fixing the world, bro. I can feel it. The world's genuinely getting better because of amazing flavor text and concepts like this. Like, what kind of fucking moron thinks this is an awesome quote? This is stupid. You own an idea. <laughs> Ugh, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. But whatever, he's got a cowboy hit. Speedwagon's membership message. How did a Brothers War construct get in the vault? Did Deferi have a hangover and look for hookers in the time stream? Wait, that's not the only one, bro. Don't worry. We've got more Brothers War, like, uh, mech foundries coming. Don't worry. Collector's Cage. Oh, you guys remember in the vault when there was, there was like, like, is, who's that even looking at it? Who is that down there? Who are those people looking at this snake ball? What is this? Put a plus one plus one on target creature you control. Then if you control three or more creatures with different powers, you can play the exiled card. What does that have to do with the ball of snake vines? What is this crap, right? Like, look at this garbage. It's obnoxious. What does this tell you about the story? What does this mean? It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Some of the art looks like AI art. You know what? There's one. There's one we're going to talk about where I'm totally willing to entertain the idea that it's AI art. It might not be, but I'm willing to entertain that it was based on AI. And I'll tell you when we get there. Sword of Wealth and Power. This is a cool looking sword, right? This is a cool looking sword, but like, what does this add to the story? There was a sword in the vault. Okay. And like, this is the follow-up story of the set. It's like the story of the heist, right? Yeah, shut up. It's just random things. Be happy. Harvester of Misery. This was in the vault, by the way, guys. This gigantic this gigantic spirit that's totally, totally from Thunder Junction, 100%. It definitely wasn't somewhere else. And they're just like, oh, yeah. So in the written story, when the vault flew away, like immediately after they took out the space baby, how did this, how did this get out? How did this random Innistrad spirit or whatever it is get out, right? It's okay, though. They painted spiky bits in the foreground, so... It counts, right? This this adds to the story. See, I can tell this adds so much flavor to the aftermath of the heist story. And it definitely feels like this is something that would be in the vault, right? It's just like, it harvests misery. So the Fomori were like, oh, we're going to put it in our vault. Why would they put this hateful spirit in, in, a, in a vault? Why would that? What, what, whatever, right? Ancient Cornucopia. One green and two piece of crap. Look at this. Whenever you cast a spell that's one or more colors, you can gain a life for each color that spells color. Do it only once a turn, and it taps for a man of any color. Jeez, I wonder if this was another uncommon. I wonder if this is an uncommon. Wow, you read the power level of it. This is definitely mythic, right? It's definitely mythic. I remember when there was some astral cornucopia pathway to another world i reckon that thing's trying to put me out of a job wow i'm glad that of the six cards that have flavor text you spent the time adding a joke on there wow 
I reckon this weird thing came out of the vault trying to take my job. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Molten duplication. One red and one sorcery that makes a, to a token copy of an artifact or creature you control. Except it's an artifact and gets haste. You sack it at the end of the turn. No one had seen this side of Angeline before. Not even, not even her. Wow. So, what, what happened with the vault here? Did lava come out? It, did lava, did, there's just some lava that turns into somebody? How does this, what? What? Okay. Tarnation Vista. Oh, look, it's Tarnation. What? What was this originally? Was this Ravnica or something? What is going on with this artwork? How big do they think Tarnation is? They made it sound like a... What? That's the vault up there? That's the vault? Up there? How did they get up to it? Did they even cover that? That's the vault? That flies into space. Oh. All right. Hostile investigator. Oh, hell, that's me right now. One black and three, four, three. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card. Whenever one or more players discard one or more cards, investigate, but only once a turn. Whoa. Wow. So mythic, so powerful. It's nuts that they made every every card in the big score count as a mythic. It's so stupid. It's so dumb. Uh, Lost GT. Okay, Lost Jeet. Hey guys, maybe it's Umazawa's other Jeet. Oh yeah. I can see like different colors of mana floating around it. So it probably like has like domain style abilities or so. Oh wait, no. What does it do? When equipped creature deals combat damage, put a counter on it and you can remove it to untap a land, make it so a creature can't block or put a plus one plus one on the equipped creature. Wow, this is so cool. And it makes me think of Umazawa's Jeet. I can definitely understand why the Fomori put this in the thunder junction vault and man does it add to the story man does this add to us to the story like the way this is shown i wouldn't be surprised if this is just cropped artwork where they're just like trim it down look at the portals and crap that are behind it right like for real Look at the portals, and there's a fucking moon there. There's a fucking moon behind it! There's a fucking moon behind the jeep! Is that moon in the vault? I can't even, man. I can't even. I can't even. What is this horse shit, bro? Esoteric duplicator. Oh, this was in the vault, too. It looks like it's outside in, like, space. Uh, geez, I wonder if this was some kind of Brothers War manufacturing foundry or something. I wonder if that's what this was. Nope, this is in the vault or whatever. Whenever you sack this or another artifact, you can pay two. If you do it at the beginning of the next end step, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. Two, sack it to draw a card. Gee, I wonder if this was originally a mythic. I wonder. I wonder. Lotus Ring. Three mana. Wow. This adds so much to the story. Did you know there's a ring that like you put on people and they sacrifice themselves for planeswalker mana? <gasps> wow. What did that do in the story? Nothing. Absolutely fucking lootly nothing. Oh. Neat. Nexus of Becoming. Yeah, Nexus of Becoming. The Brothers War. Look at this shit. This is a, like a this is a war foundry, bro. Come on, man. We're making mechs. Generous plunder. Oh, look at me. I'm at the giant vault somehow, even though it's up in the air and there's only six people who were there. 
<sighs> Stupid. Oh! <laughs> oh, the Down Syndrome Raccoon. That's the key. Yeah, the key to the whole multiverse. I take it all back. The vault's ultimate prize wasn't exactly what Kellen had imagined. Yeah, Kellen wasn't even there when the vault got open, did he? He wasn't there. He wasn't there. This is what magic is now. Buy this electro butt plug Down Syndrome raccoon with no fucking nose. He's got a weird little fucking orca face. Crack his head open with a baseball bat, bro. This is the this is the only thing the story says was in the vault. This is the only thing the written story says was in the vault. And a bunch of fucking clownfish magoos are like, Hey man, it's cool. Like in the story, they turned out that it turned out that Chase was actually Ash Yuck all along and all he wanted was this stupid he just wanted to abduct a space baby. Oh wow, that's so cool and not dumb at all. I love it. Oh, look, something that's definitely inside the vault and isn't an Urza, isn't like a Brothers War mech making thing. It definitely, it definitely isn't. It definitely isn't from uh, Brothers War. There's nothing Brothers War about this. This screams Thunder, Thunder Butt Toucher, right? What up, Fixa? How you doing? Loot might make a good breakfast. I doubt it. I doubt it. He's got terrible meat. Greed's Gambit. Oh, I wonder what this was originally. I, d I highly doubt it was actually a cowboy. Probably like some Innistrad vampire or some crap. Like, it's literally turning into smoke and bats, but whatever. Whatever. Greed's Gambit. Whoopty dippity dorkity do. Pest control. Oh, guys, do you remember that Bertram Greywater had a gigantic death dildo that he used to kill rats in the town? Remember that? This is cool flavor, right? How dare these varmints befoul the shining streets of prosperity? This is the after story to the big heist, guys. This is it. Pest control is a gigantic white dick in the middle of the city that just destroys all non-land permanents that cost one or less. Did they put Orox in the vault? No, man, look. The aurochs go in the aurochs pasture, okay? That's where they belong. That's where they belong. That's Halo. It's New Capenna Halo. <laughs> yeah, they took all the angel's essence and they're blasting it out. No, that's thunder, even though thunder's yellow. This is white thunder. By the way, that's the nickname your mom gave me last night. White thunder when I destroyed her varmint. Get it? It's a plow in your mama joke. <laughs> the Fomori Vault. Whoa. It's not floating in the air. They showed it floating in the air. For they they showed us tarnation and it's floating in the air with the lava falling off of it. Why is it on the ground? What? Taps for a mana. Or three and tap discard a card. Look at the top X cards of your library or X is a number of artifacts you control. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh yeah, that screams mythic. Discard a card to get a card. Mythic. Very mythic. Very mythic. So yeah, this this is the vault? Or is this the vault inside the other vault? <laughs> <laughs> what up Kiger all right uh oh, next torpor orb wow upgraded to mythic it totally deserves it two mana for an artifact that says creatures ending the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger devour the hope of a world and it will bow before you wow a fomori inscription this is so cool story flavor goodness whoopity doo Vault born tyrant. Look, it's Zakama. It's Zakama. Guys, Zakama came out of the vault. Did you know that Zakama was in the vault? 
And did you know that in front of the vault was a very Ixalan looking platform? Look, it's Zakama. Zakama was Zakama was in the vault. And there's also a Terminator Zakama that's like fornicating its butt. So I take it all back, man. This is a solid story. This makes sense. This all adds up now. I, di I didn't quite get it. I didn't quite get it until I realized that Zakama was inside the vault. And also meteors are flying out of the vault as Zakama comes out. Right? Because Zakama can cast Meteo from Final Fantasy. What happened? What the fuck happened to this game, man? What? The, what, what? They're just, they don't even get, this was meant to be a follow-up set, by the way. The whole thing, all we're looking at, everything is supposed to be an entire follow-up set that tells you the after story. And with a straight face, with a straight face, look, like, this is like, so you guys wanted more lore, this is giving you more lore. No, it's not, you fucking assholes. You wanted to sell five-car boosters for over-costed prices, you stupid jerk-off. There's just dinosaurs in there. How are they not dead? How did they get loose? What is going on? Oh, I... Uh, Look at this stupid bullshit. Look at this dumb fucking nonsense. Jason Vraska, the fucking child of doctors. We can just take him. He can be ours. Why? Because she can't get pregnant. We tried, man. I told my mom. Your mom is you, Jace. Jace, guys, if you didn't know, the real story of the vault is in this artwork, it's actually just three Jaces. And that's canon. So you've got Jace as Jace. You've got Jace as Vraska, and you have Jace as the space baby. Because Jace is every planeswalker and everything now. So like, but look, they're looking at lotuses. Isn't it cool? Isn't it awesome? I love it. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. So good. So yeah, three Jaces. Memory Vessel. Oh, look. Hey, look. This busted up jar. This screams good follow-up story, right? Remember the jar? It's cut into pieces. Isn't that neat? I wonder what this was actually supposed to be. Ralph, I don't think loot is supposed to be a Fomori. It would make no sense for the Fomori to imprison one of their own. He's just some stolen space baby that they needed to map the universe, but then just shoved in a thing instead of using the map of the universe or whatever. Don't think about it because fuck you. That's why, right? Wizards didn't. They didn't think about it at all. They went, screw these clowns. They expected us to fucking buy this as a set. Crazy bullshit. Nexus of Becoming. Wait, we, we saw this already. Transmutation font. Oh, look, a face that blasts out blood. I wonder where this would have been. I wonder if this would be in some vampire... Re nope, nope, no, nah, it was... Never mind. It's just the Fomori Vault, and it fits right in. Right in. It makes a clue token? Yeah, I'd love to have a clue. Rest in peace. So, if you guys didn't know, by the way, after, after the vault was opened, everybody on Thunder Junction died. There was a rapture where the birds got really angry and flew around and then everybody fucking died from light blasts. Orbital laser strikes killed everybody on Thunder Junction. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? It's nutty, but that's the story. That's the story. So everybody is gone forever. Everybody died from orbital laser strikes in the vault. In the vault. So that's what happened here. Territory Forge, five mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, exile target artifact or land, it has all activated abilities of the exiled card. Whoa, this feels ultra mega mythic to me. This definitely probably wasn't like uncommon removal in the original set or nothing, right? This is definitely like, and there was a whole sea of lava inside the vault and a bunch of squiggles going into a yellow thing. Wow, bro, that's so cool. That's so cool. Oh, look, it's a helmet from Ixalan. Isn't that neat? 
Isn't that neat? A jade helmet from Ixalan. Why is this in the vault? This is part of the story, guys. Do you feel the story growing more? Does it feel connected now that you know that there is a, a, like a jade helmet that's just there? You know, the stuff that the Ixalan merfolk make? It's just here. Was it here for 10,000 years before those merfolk even existed? Or what? 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 Oh yeah, here we go. Bristle Bud Farmer. This I wouldn't be surprised if Brussels sprouts here was AI artwork. Like it's just got a bunch of random balls behind him and like there's one down in the bottom corner that has a mouth here and stuff. Like why does this one have a mouth? It's so it's so random and weird. This guy was in the vault, by the way. This is the after story. Look at him. look where is he? Where is he? He's not just out in the desert. What is that ring above him? What's happening? Like, what, what is even going on? Is he getting attacked by Brussels sprouts? Is this supposed to be him crapping them out his back, but then they're boomeranging around front? Like, what are, where, what? They're not, they're, it doesn't make any sense, man. This makes no sense. Like, the artwork is bizarre. His arms are weird. This is Garbo. And this is the story of whatever? Sandstorm Salvager. Oh, look, a, a soldier of Avacyn who's literally holding an Avacyn spear axe who's standing in front of, what, a rejected Phyrexian robot that they painted a little to maybe look different? She's standing in front of a Brothers War mech with what looks like a Kaladesh thing behind it. What the hell is this? What is this? I, I, I don't understand. I genuinely don't understand what I'm looking at. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense at all. Mora didn't want friends, but she didn't mind having someone to watch her back. How? How? How the fuck did she team up with a golem or whatever? She's a sandstorm salvager. So she just found this mech buried in the, in the sand? Is There's a sandstorm and she salvages things that are in it? But I thought this was in the vault. What? How did all you randos get random things from the vault that flew off into fucking space? And then we got this guy. Oh, look. Old Tech Matter Weaver. So this dude who's dressed just like the people we saw on Ixalan. Just, just saw on Ixalan. The ones who use the, um, what's it called? Why am I forgetting the name of it? It's made out of Chimmel's blood. Oh, the stupid, oh, what is it called? Why can't I remember the name? Probably because it didn't really impress me. What was it? What the hell was the name of that crap? The pink crap. Cosmite, that's it. So yeah, this guy was just with the Cosmium. This guy was just over on Ixalan. He was trapped in the vault that the Fomori built forever ago. What did he eat? How did he survive in there? Or am I just supposed to be... A, no, we got to understand is it's really obvious that he came over from Ixalan, got into the vault, and then managed to get this thing that looks just like the technology kind of stuff that they have on Ixalan. And it very looks very Ixalan-y. But it's totally like this is the after story or whatever. So he made a gnome that he bangs or something in the vault because he was lonely. So he kissed it on the mouth and, and did other things to its mouth. It's like... Okay. Okay. Oh, there we go. We've been extruded all the way through. I guess that means I can... Uh... Hold on, let's change this up here. Yeah, there we go. All right. So we'll let that we'll let that rotate through random random cards that we've already looked at. Ugh. Gianna, do I remember the scene in that movie Your Highness where they had to make out the creepy puppet? Yeah, actually I do. 
Prevenger says the vault doesn't reek of recycled designs that they altered art for by adding cowboy hats. Not at all. I mean, there's no cowboy hat on this guy, right? So they didn't even bother. They just took the art. Like, they didn't even bother to put a cowboy hat on the Matter Weaver. Why is he allowed to not wear a cowboy hat, right? I, I love the fucking arrogance. The arrogance of telling us we're going to get story. This is the follow-up story and whatever. No, it's not. It's you trying to rob us fucking blind. And then when you greedy pieces of shit have it blow up in your face like you deserve, you shove this fucking crap into the main set and then just go, it's all mythic. You just got a mythic. No, that's an uncommon bitch. No, -uh, we put the mythic symbol on it. It's like, do you not realize how much of a diminishing returns this has? Like, you don't just get to lie to your customers and everything goes just fine. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. Like, at all, bro. It's fucking pure absurdity, man. Pure absurdity. Yeah, there you go. Turn the matter weaver into a hat weaver. Have the story be the reason. Every, he's the reason he made all the hats and he's forcing people to wear them. That's funny. So yeah, the big score is a big fucking scam, man. And I'm glad that it blew up in Wizard's face because they fucking deserve it. The greedy cock smokers. It's so gross. They charge these insane prices and put no effort in. They put no effort into this. They just went, pick a bunch of artwork we have kicking around with Zakama and other stuff and just shove it in. Who cares? It's the vault. It's where all the treasure is. All these gigantic foundries that look like they're from Brothers War. Yup. Why do they look like they're from Brothers War? Shut up. Loot's in there. Isn't that cool? Buy it. Buy a plushie, asshole. Give us money, you ugly dumb fucks. The cowboy set has no villainy. It doesn't in the real story, but they got some they got some villainous stuff looking like it's going on a bit. A bit. But yeah, it's pretty weak sauce. It's pretty weak sauce. It's so dumb. It's so stupid. This set is awful. It's awful. Just terrible. Ugh, Troy, you like the live streams, buddy? Well, I got good news for you then, son. I got a whole fucking archive. I got a whole archive of plenty of fucking live streams just like this. And now that I'm mentioning it, I'll go ahead and grab the link and share it in the Discord. No, nope, I'll share it in the stream. All right. All right, guys, for anybody who didn't already know, because still spreading the fucking word because it takes forever to get the word anywhere. If you want more of these live streams, they end up over on my archive afterwards. All right. I need more Kool-Aid. So enjoy this. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatchet goes for a drink. Bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatchet goes for a drink, bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. 
Use my Amazon link. When Hatcher goes for a drink, bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatcher goes for a drink, bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatcher goes for a drink, bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch. All right, I'm back. I'm back and I got more grape Kool-Aid. Eric, how are they going to destroy Bloomboro? I feel like Bloomboro actually is going to be harder to ruin. I don't know. Maybe they'll find a way. But Bloomboro is basically just take a bunch of animals and um, take a bunch of animals and jam them into a world, right? So I feel like I, Bloomboro is my fucking great white hope of the set, you know? Or not the set, I should say, of the year. It's like, come on, man. Come on. You're playing with Eye of Singularity. That old white enchantment? That's like a million years old. Uh, what was the point of a set with all bad guys if they aren't being bad guys? Oh, it's real simple. Buy the commanders. Here's the commanders. Also... People just make up stories in their head. They just go, this is what's happening, and I think it's cool. And it's like, all right, sure. Sure. Is Bloomboro a theme set? No. Thankfully, they're only going to do, like, one theme set a year currently. So, no. Bloomboro should have more internal consistency. It really drives me crazy that they just go, well, we consider Thunder Junction a theme set. So that just means we're going to have all kinds of people show up because of the omen paths and they'll all follow a theme. And it's like, can you spend the extra 20 minutes to make it fucking work, please? Can you give us a reason that everybody's dressed in this fucking, in this cowboy gear at all? Like, why is everybody uniformly dressing like this? And the answer can't be, because that's what a cowboy set should have. I need a real answer. I need a reason. Oh, this stupid crap again. But I guess they can't tell me because they don't own any ideas. You own an idea. Drink bleach, motherfucker. Drives me crazy. Spurl, you're really glad I'm doing the old storylines again? Me too, bro. Oh my god. Talk about the complete opposite of Thunder Junction. Watching Yogmoth's devious plan unfurl as he decimates the Thranish army. Get fucked! The desert opens up and just starts swallowing everybody. They're getting chewed up. What's going on? Turns out they're metallic crabs coming out and scything everybody up. Got his airships coming down from the sky. Bro is hiding in the sun. You didn't even know it was up there. Bam, 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 bam! Blowing them all up. It's awesome. Awesome. So yeah, I'm glad that I'm doing the old school lore and i hope that things go well over there so that i just keep it flowing and keep it going because for the longest time now i've just been doing new lore and i mean wow the the new let's be real the new lore video is not it is not performing well view wise at this juncture so we'll see how it goes i don't know how much interest there's going to be in it but at least the people 
who are interested in it are enjoying it. So there is that. I like the lore. Other people like the lore. We'll see how it goes. But I would love to uh, do the whole novel. Grand Abolisher looks like a pimp. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Jess, if you make up an idea, why don't you own it? You can't, you can't own an idea. You can own intellectual property in a fucking capitalist society. But this is a dumb fuck goon out in the Wild West going, you own an idea. You can't own an idea. If you owned the idea, other people couldn't have it. You know how you can't have this fucking cup of water or cup of Kool-Aid because I fucking own it? Ideas aren't like that. Ideas aren't objects you can fucking own. A concept cannot be forced out of other people's minds, right? Like, that's not possible. So, that's idiotic writing. What up, Goddard? How you doing? You missed why he keeps referencing you don't own an idea. He's referencing the concept of, it's basically like, you don't own the land just because you wrote that down on a map. All you own is the idea of owning the land. It's what a complete fucking moron thinks is a slam dunk win. And it's even crazier because it's done from the perspective of like, they're taking the indigenous land, but you can't do that. You don't own the land. And it's like, there are no indigenous people here though. Wizards of the Coast has indigenous people who are also invaders of the land. So the Indians in this set are also invaders. The Atin is a very confusing concept where it's like, so you wanted to make sure you had indigenous representation, but you refuse to have them be people who are living on the plane and they come from another place. So they can't be what you're purporting them to be. So it's a big muddled dumb fuck mess that will be lapped up by brain dead idiots who aren't capable of actually figuring out what's going on. And I know that because I have morons try and correct me and go, this is actually this. And it's like, bro, let your mom feed you soup or whatever and don't talk to me because I can't handle your stupidity, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. God, your kid likes watching Smash Bro tournaments? Well, maybe one day he'll watch somebody win. And then you can go, that's my boy. He doesn't win at things, but he watches other people win. Maybe you can get him a, the, instead of participation ribbons, what do they have now? Get him an existence ribbon. I existed near a Smash Brothers tournament. <laughs> SK, who's this set for? Uh, everybody? What are you talking about? First of all, it's got the deepest, best lore of any set. Secondly, it's got like 90 different legendary characters that are all fully fleshed out with proper backstories that all weave together. They're not just like shoved in there. And then on top of that, they've got the big score, which is the perfectly executed follow-up story that has incredibly rich details that leave me hungering for more. I don't even know what you're talking about. This sets for everybody. This is like Thunder Junction is the best magic set so far. Their Wizards is on the top of their game for real. And this is the reversal that we needed. We're heading in the right direction. I can't believe that you would take the position that this is anything other than brilliant, right? The flavor is perfect. Everything's coherent. It's not like it's a random mishmash of garbage, right? Are existence ribbons a real thing? I don't think so. 10-4. I don't think we're at that point. I mean, Twitter is full of existence ribbons. You get little hearts from people for saying the right thing to actual functional members of society. Hey, functional member of society post something. Uh, constantly online goobers who have nothing going on in their life. Oh, I have a problem with what you're doing. Oh, God, I got some hearts from other fucking loser idiots who are non-contributors. Whew. It's almost like I had to actually go and do something in the world for a second. But nope, I can keep getting validated just for existing. Uh, some, why are you seeing DEI everywhere all of a sudden? You've never seen it before. 
and now you've seen it a lot of times in the last couple of days. Well, I mean, it could be a number of things. First of all, it could just be that you weren't really paying attention and people were talking about it because once we become more aware of something, we see it around us, even if it's been around us all along. All of a sudden, it's like, wow, wow. It's like when you learn a new word and you're like, wow, that word keeps coming up. What we focus on feels more prevalent, essentially, right? But the reason that this stuff is coming up is because people are tired of the it stands for diversity equity and inclusion but it's basically used as exclusion and it's empty like for example wizards of the coast they hire a cultural consultant to create indigenous people for this set because they're worried about the indigenous implications but by not having them be indigenous to the plane and having them come from a completely different plane but going they have this deep spiritual power and all this stuff like they're these, they're doing the mystic Indian thing and they're just going, look, they've got the right skin color, so this counts. And it's like, do you not see how empty what you're doing is? No, we're being inclusive. No, you're, you're using them as posters, essentially. Like you didn't create any depth or reality. They did the, the way they approached this out of a fear of triggering people over the whole indigenous thing has led to insanity where you just go, so these are also just invaders. If everybody else is a colonizer invader, then so are the Atin. You don't get to pretend like it's, it's a weird thing where they want to be like, there's nothing wrong going on and nobody's colonizing the Indians. That's not happening at all. But also check out these awesome Indians that are on the plane and listen to this guy's tech. You don't own the land. Excuse me, I've got a map. You own an idea. You own an idea. So it's like, Basically, there's been a bunch of pushback against the insanely racist policies of the last few years. And so you're seeing the term more now because companies are getting fucking sued over it. You're not allowed to go, I'm excluding people by race and sex anymore. But two years ago, you were able to. You could go, I'm making this job and I'm only accepting black women to it. And people would be like, <laughs> but now... A bunch of lawsuits have been mounted against companies for doing that stuff where insane lunatics online go, hey, it's first of all, you can't be racist to anybody who's white. So there's nothing wrong with this at all, okay? Excluding white people for being white isn't racist, right? Because of some kind of systemic social thing. Don't question me too much on it, but just take what I'm, take what I'm saying for real. I'm judging people based on their sex and skin color, but that's not bigoted and judgmental because I'm doing it the right way. I'm hating the right colors and the right genders. And it's like, no. See, that's illegal. That's like, that's, that's the kind of stuff you're not allowed to do. Yes, I can! And so... Yeah, there's been, there's been a bunch of pushback, and now companies' lawyers are going, S -s 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 fire, fire the DEI people. We got to stop this. Like, you can't racially discriminate anymore. We got to stop discriminating. It was politically cool to do it for a while, but it's not anymore. So that might be why you're seeing it popping up here or there, right? Like, it's this corporate nonsense where the basic thrust of it is, there's a gigantic investor company that wants to change the world for whatever ridiculous purposes. And I don't believe they're good purposes. And so they just start telling all these corporations, what are you doing to, what are you doing to change the environment? What are you doing to help society? What are you doing to influence government? And we're not going to give you money unless you do that. Oh, we want this money. We want the loans and stuff at near, near zero interest. We want your investments. So we'll do whatever nonsense you say. And so real change and real anything is very difficult. But just pointing at somebody's skin color and going, look, I got the right skin color people here. Can I have money? Okay, here you go. Like, that's it. It's just empty corporate bullshit. The same way that back in the day, Wizards was like, yo, we want to sell this card in China. Can you please take the black man off it and paint a white man version? They did that. I'm not even making shit up. That's literally what they did. So Wizards doesn't believe in any of this shit. And if investors said, uh, we'll only invest in your company if you have art depicting gay people being thrown off of roofs, Wizards would do it. Wizards would do it for the money. They would do it in other countries. They would literally, yeah, sure, what, you don't like these guys? Yeah, we hate them too. Like, for real. They don't mean a thing that they fucking say. It's empty bullshit. So, 
now the world's catching up and being like oh yeah no you're not allowed to actually be racist and discriminatory and there are some crybabies online who are like no uh, it's not it's not because as long as you're doing it against white people it's okay it's like uh-huh uh-huh so let me get this straight everybody but me is allowed to be proud of who they are that's right you got a dick in the wrong skin color you sound hateful as fuck. I'm not allowed to love myself or be proud of who I am. Look, man, if you're proud of who you are, that's hate mongering. Would you care to explain to me how that works? Because, yeah, sorry, I haven't smoked enough crack where you can discriminate against any group and it's okay. But, you know, fuck me, right? Shelton says, my local game store just fired their best employee and I feel like it's going to close at some point in the future. Oh, that is a disappointing feeling, man. Losing your LGS ain't good well i hope that doesn't happen i hope that doesn't happen <clears throat> so yeah there's a bunch of um there's a bunch of ridiculous people online who get all uppity about all this shit i never fucking cared one way or the other for me it's like yo just make a game i can enjoy I never got into magic for politics. And the people who want to drag politics into everything are the most pathetic and boring people. The conversations are so boring. And the people are so fractious at the same time. So I just look at it and go, whatever, man. Have fun arguing about it online. These morons try and start with me every once in a while. I'm just like, I'm not even talking to you, bro. I have zero interest in what you have to say like none i don't give a fuck i just want to enjoy my game so run along and go talk to the other idiots who care about what you do it's so fucking ridiculous man yeah magar your favorite lgs announced the close at the end of the month that sucks that sucks wizards of the coast choices man it, it ain't helping lgs's making super expensive products that are full of fucking garbage they don't give a fuck what happens they don't care if your game store closes bro pop a feather in the hat there's no band for it and i don't have a feather but this is a this is a cowboy hat i'm a wild west man bro i'm the wildly westiest guy <laughs> standard fiend says anyone dissatisfied with the dei of magic check out sorcery they don't go in for any of that crap well that's true as far as i've seen of sorcery they're just making a game. They're not worried about trying to appeal to political idiots online. They're just like, yo, what if we just made a card game? What if we just got a bunch of cool art and just made a game for people to play and didn't worry about getting up our own asses with like, we're going to change the world. Sure you are. But hey, I mean, I guess magic makes perpetually online clowns feel like the world's getting better. It sure is. That's what's happening here. It's definitely not a corporation that doesn't give a fuck about you taking advantage of you have fun thinking you're changing the world bro it's ridiculous so yeah the fact that uh the fact that you're seeing this more and more is obviously just like it's like a rebalancing wizards a few years ago was at the height of this ridiculousness where they're like check it out holler's really cool because they use elvish gender neutral pronouns <laughs> like that was supposed to be a selling point man it's fucking amazing like it is amazing how ridiculous they got they made amina tau the most powerful planeswalker in existence and the article the chick was like i believe in representing things accurately little girls are infinite fonts of metaphysical power and the mirage world is unacceptable because yes it did have a lot of black people but they had roman costume creep so that <laughs> what so we're past that now wizards of the coast has realized that pandering to fucking morons isn't really making them as much money so they're like well, you know what it's time to ease down that ramp the people who think that wizards is on their side it's like did you forget that just a few years ago they went uh no kill that chandra and nissa relationship they're not into it the russians and stuff won't like that uh, she's into Gideon because he's a beef boy and she always has been. So they literally retconned it and went, uh, no, 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 no. Chandra's into hardcore meat boys, right? The company doesn't give a shit. They don't get like, 
I can forgive companies that actually believe if they believe their politics, like a company where they're like, yo, we've always stood for this. This is what we're about. Cool. Right. You're willing to take the knock in sales or whatever to actually do what you believe in. That's respectable. But you're not going to find any corporations that have shareholders that have that position. Right. That's not the case. They're just empty. It's empty bullshit to take advantage of morons. That's the deal. That's the deal. Watch as they do nothing with Aminatow. Well, they didn't need to do anything. Don't you? Like, Aminatow was created because, according to their logic, they didn't like that when people were asked who the most powerful planeswalkers were, they would say things like Urza. And they'd be like, no, wait, but Urza's like, no, 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 no. The most powerful planeswalker is a small black girl. And that's how we do it. And so they just write an article going, she's the most powerful planeswalker because she can see all the different fates and decided, well, why wait to become a planeswalker? I'll just beat one now. And she controls everyone's fate. And it's like, oh, okay. Are you going to write stories with this character? We don't need to. We already accomplished our goal. And it's like, cool. You did it. Everybody I know goes, and Minotaur is the coolest, most powerful planeswalker. It's not like she never comes up or anything. So it's all empty. If you don't put any effort into it, you're not going to create memorable characters. People aren't going to connect with it. And it's just going to fall by the wayside. Why do you think people like the old lore better than the new lore? Because this new stuff's just empty. It's just empty garbage. Just, they're spending like no money on it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So yeah, big corporations, big corporations just chasing what they think are going to make them money. And when they realize it won't, they just move along. So we're just moving into the next phase. It feels like society just kind of pendulum swings where it's like it gets super politically correct. Then it gets less politically correct. Then it gets super politically correct. Then it gets less politically correct. And because of the nature of the internet and the way it congeals things, it makes it feel bigger and louder than it is. But ultimately, it's just a bunch of goofs yelling online. <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's not actually affecting the real world in any noticeable way, except for obviously, like, universe cities and stuff and the kids getting their their heads filled with nonsense but whatever man whatever what a what a wild world my friends what a wild world so yeah man i'm reading the original story of the thran and it's just so much better it's just so much better. The new stuff is is empty and nonsensical. It's like, so you have Rakdos and you're going on a train heist and you don't bring Rakdos? Why didn't Rakdos come? Not even a reason given. Here's the trailer. Here's Rakdos stopping a train by jumping on it. So you didn't bring Rakdos on the train heist at all. But you show us Rakdos on the train heist. Okay. No, don't worry. We're going to use Rakdos really well. Oh, are you? What are you going to do? Uh, we'll have him punch Ral at the beginning. Okay, anything else? Nope. Okay, we just went to Tarnation. Is Rakdos with us? Nope. And Kellen gets in a fight with the cool, and all this stuff happens, and Greywater shows up, and then Rakdos does this. No, 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 back it up. You just said Rakdos wasn't here. Well, now they are, because it's going to be cool to have Rakdos fight a cool or something. Like, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. What is this? You can't just ignore that you have these characters in your fucking story and you can't ignore their abilities. You can't have Annie not seeing through Jace's illusion. You can't. Her whole stick is that she sees through illusion and she would definitely stare at Ashiok and use that ability. She would use it on every single one of those outlaws. It makes no sense for her to do anything else. She's worried. She's concerned. She doesn't want to get trapped again. She knows they're outlaws. She doesn't want to be part of the band. And yet she doesn't bother to use her innate ability built into her eye that she could easily activate. Nope. Nope. And then the story goes even further. Well, actually, once Jace drops the original illusion, he has another illusion on that Annie sees through. You mean the illusion that hides that he's a Phyrexian that would be even stronger because he actually cares about that so much more? If he cares enough to hide himself under that illusionary version, that illusion version would be even stronger than the Ashiok illusion, or at least equal strength. So either she can't see through it, or you made Annie a complete m moron. Like, what? 
What? The plane has no indigenous inhabitants. Did a cool come from off the plane? Shut up. There's all kinds of scorpion dragons. What? Yeah, and cactus people. You said nobody's here. Yeah, nobody's here. Also, there's lots of corpses to be animated. What? Like... <laughs> <laughs> what the, what the fuck does that even mean man you know like what are you doing what are you doing it's ridiculous just ridiculous <laughs> so wizards needs to rededicate itself to proper lore Right? The fact that they're moving away from all the political dumbass bullshit, at least somewhat. There's still there's there's still some crammed in there. But not nearly as much, and it's not as prevalent. And I don't care about that crap if you tell me a good story. You can put whatever elements you want into your story if you tell me a good story. 100%. 100%. Like, for real. I need good stories. I need something that engages my brain and gives me something to chew on. You can't just give me surface level nonsense and expect me to accept that. Well, this is awesome. And Thunder Junction's complete fucking trash. Talking to my buddy down at the store and it's like about the J Space Baby thing. And he's like, I couldn't even read the last installments. I just don't care. And I'm like, the crazy thing is, is those installments are more competently written than the previous installments. But it doesn't matter because it just feels so disjointed they might be better written but they don't have better plot points jace being ashiok is patently stupid and it's crazy to me that people keep trying to explain you just don't get it jace was ashiok no you just don't get it what you're saying doesn't make any sense what you are saying does not make sense it's crazy it's nonsensical. You see the problem? No, you don't get it. Jace was Ashiok, and that's cool. No, but that doesn't line up with the Wilds of Eldraine story. But Wizard said it does. No, but they wrote that story, and it was recent. You can go and read it for yourself. It doesn't line up. No, this is good. It makes all the sense that Jace would pretend to be Ashiok and then would hire Oko so that Oko who is a notorious trickster and fickle and whatever else, would totally then round up a posse of people that he could pay, including Ariette, who Jace's Ashiok brought, telling her that she would be a queen on another plane. I'm going to take you somewhere and make you a queen. Lot, just kidding. You're part of a saloon crew to steal from a vault. Maybe crackheads go, you, no, that's on the way. That's on the way. That's what's going on. Jace is just, look, I'm going to make you a queen in another place. But first, we got to go and do the vault thing, right? And then when he gets the vault, baby, oh, he just leaves. But what he said he was going to do, Ariette, why did he say that? He, he had to get her on board because he offered her money. No, wait, he said he's going to make her a king. Where does the money come into it? Also, he's a mind mage. Couldn't he just... No, this makes sense. This makes sense. Like... I wish I was dumb so I could enjoy this crap. Eclipse Warlord Super Chat says, Stupid story by stupid writers. 100%, buddy. You nailed it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't think that the story was going to get more bullshit after March on the Machines. I didn't know they were just going to throw their hands up and go, Fuck it! But that's what they did. The Markov uh, Manor story at least had some consistency thunder junctions just disparate nonsense just awful awful crap <laughs> oh you read ai generated stories that made more sense in this set's lore i believe it i believe it a hundred percent a hundred percent dragon raider did someone lose half a brain writing this story because i feel less intelligent just hearing it Wizards doesn't pay enough for the writers to care. That's part of it. And new era writers don't seem to be able to write stories. They only write moments and getting to the moments doesn't matter, which is insane. I, I, I can't believe it, but I genuinely do feel like the second weekend at Bernie's movie is more internally consistent and better written 
than Thunder Junction lore. Now, the, the second weekend of Bernie's was never supposed to exist. The first weekend of Bernie's was the entire movie where this fucking rich dude dies and these guys decide to pretend he's still alive for social and monetary gain. So they like tie ropes to his corpse and make it wave at people and stuff and pretend he's alive. But at the end of the movie, he's just dead. And that movie did way better than the people who made it expected it to. So like, we got to do a sequel. And the sequel is they find, they get Bernie's corpse and they animate it with voodoo to try and like get rich off of something. I can't remember that part of it exactly. But it's it seems like that is more consistent than the Thunder Junction story. Uh, Murph, my theory about most of the cards are made out of leftover art. Oh, that's absolutely the case. I mean, look at look at this right here. This is Ixalan artwork, right? And this one right here, Brothers War, bro. How it works is Wizards of the Coast commissions a bunch of art. They've paid for it. They've got it kicking around. They're going to use it. In the past, they would pick art that felt like it fit into the world. Like they would go, yo, go through the slush art and find things that actually, maybe they're a little bit off, but they fit. And then Wizards got the idea of, wait a minute, we can dump slush art in modern Horizon sets because they're not in a particular place, right? They can be from anywhere. So we can just have a mishmash of whatever, just start grabbing art out and making cards for that art. Who cares, right? Like that kind of a deal. So the Modern Horizon sets turned out to be really profitable where they get to charge high prices for the packs and they're using art they already kept kicking around. So the corporate executives over there go, new mandate, you got to start using way more slush art in sets. And that's how you get Markov Manor where they have all the Capanna stuff that had to get shoved in. The idea behind Thunder Junction is all villains isn't because it would be cool for it to be all villains it's because they can use all the slush art of all the villains they have kicking around and with the big score vault shit they just went we can just use whatever random artwork who cares if it's from innistrad avison like <laughs> the caverns all of it all of it they just shoved it in they, look at this jeep this has nothing to do with it. this has literally nothing to do with thunder junction and here it is so this was going to be sold to us as a separate set using just slush art that's absolutely what's going on why would why would you think for a second that any of this would be explained in a future set like murph be honest with yourself why the fuck would you think that it's completely illogical remember how they filled um malcolm's eyes with fungus at the end of the story for the caverns and now he's on thunder junction there's no fungus in his eyes there's no explanation for any of that remember how calyx Learn how to become a planeswalker just so we could chase after Elspeth. Do you love the follow-up to that? Oh, that's right. There was no follow-up to that. There's no follow-up to anything ever. The follow-up to the Wilds of Eldrain story, where we were promised that Ashiok and Ariette would be set up on another plane, was thrown into Thunder Junction instead and went, actually, that was Jace's Ashiok. And Ariette's just like, I should have got more fun bucks because Kellen's a part of this. So they're just taking the crap they have kicking around and using it because they don't care how insulting it is to the audience. It's cheaper for them. And they're going to cut costs wherever possible, jack prices wherever possible, because the customer doesn't matter. Making quarterly profit targets is the only thing that matters. Like for real, they'll do anything that's not blatantly illegal to rip us the fuck off. They're doing a Thunder Junction skis on game stores where they're like, you guys can't get Modern Horizons 3 collector decks very easily, can you? It'd be really convenient if we made sure you got some, huh? All you have to do is buy enough Thunder Junction to run four Thunder Junction drafts and then we'll guarantee that you can buy these expensive commander decks off us. And you know what? You should maybe then give them away for the draft or something. What? Yeah, you should buy these decks that like are like $300 and will cost you probably like 250 bucks. You should like buy those. You should pay us like $1,000 for a set of commander decks and then you should give them away. Buy some Thunder Junction. Buy Thunder Junction. We got to double the profits because the big set shoved in here. Buy it. We need to double the money. Buy it. Ozzy, have I ever got any insider info from Wizards of the Coast employees? Yes. Yes, I have. 
I've gotten inside information from a number of sources, and one of which was a previous employee of Wizards of the Coast, and that's how I know that booster, po booster packs cost like a quarter to make. They cost like a quarter to make. That's it. That's the production costs. That's not the cost to get the art and everything, but to make a booster pack, it costs Wizards at most 25 cents for real. For real. That's a little bit adjusting for inflation based on the numbers that were the cost when um, this person was working for Wizards of the Coast. So it may turn out that it's cheaper because Wizards has reduced quality in a number of ways. So it might not even be 25 cents a booster pack. But for real, that's, that's the price they're dealing with. That's the price they're dealing with. So it costs them like 10 bucks to make a booster box, bro. Like it's... It's such a skis. It's such a fucking ripoff, man. Like, you can buy any number of fucking board games. Like, you can buy this game right here. The fucking Binding of Isaac card game, right? This game is fucking dope. I don't know exactly how much it sells for, but you know what? A quick a quick internet search will tell me that. I, I presume it's still in print. So, let's see here. Oh, wait. I put the wrong name in. Hold on. Yeah. So, you can get this game for, like, 50 Canadian dollars. So, maybe, like, 35, 40 American dollars, right? And I don't know exactly how much is in here, but there's, like, this box is just full of a ton of cards. It's the entire game. Everything you need to play it, including dice, all that stuff. And it comes with an incredible card box, too. And, like, that's what Wizards wants you to pay for one collector booster, right? Because they're up their own ass and they just want as much money as they can get. They're literally printing money and they're constantly reducing the quality of the cards, the card design. Like, it's insane to me. It's insane to me. Why don't the stores buy off of Amazon and use those instead of the distributor? Uh, are, are they going to be guaranteed to get them? Can they order in the quantity that they want? There's a whole number of different reasons that they aren't going to go that route, right? So, B.O., where did I get this hat? That's a good question. I got this hat around the time of the first Ixalan, so I can't remember where I got it from. I think it might have come from, like, a Spirit Halloween-style store, because this is like a, um, it was, this is my pirate hat originally. But you can also fucking yeehaw! <laughs> Cauldron, you're stoked for some of the cards making their debut on Arena? I've been loving Arena. I have played Arena like every day for sometimes two or three hours. Like every single day. I've been playing it on my Steam Deck, been playing it on my computer. I filled out the Mastery Pass. I finished the Thunder Junction Mastery Pass, not Thunder Junction, Markov Manor Mastery Pass three weeks before the season ends, before the before the switch over. Like, I've been playing a ton and having a lot of fun with it. What up, Yellow Metal? How you doing, buddy? Why did I get a pirate hat? For the fucking Ixalan Pirates, motherfucker. That's why. That's why. Jeffrey, you like sorcery? I like sorcery too, man. The cards are fucking beautiful. I have the alpha edition and, uh, and a playmat. I was told I was going to get a sorcery binder, but that never materialized. And I imagine that's just because those guys are really busy and that probably got lost and forgotten in the mix, which is totally fine because whatever, right? Whatever. But yeah, sorcery, sorcery seems nice. The card quality is good. They look fucking gorgeous. The uh, company is putting out like one set a year, so they're just taking their time with it. Seems like it's going to do just fine. Break stop says, yeehaw, partner, rooting and a tootin' and Kellen and Oko's hot bodies are tumbling. <laughs> hot father on son action in the showers of Ram Ranch. <laughs> 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 
So yeah, man, Wizards of the Coast is just taking advantage of its customer base. And their whole, like, everybody just plays Commander now, so it's all casual, and it doesn't matter what we do or what we make, when it absolutely does. It absolutely does. The game is in, the game is in decline at this time. 100%. Eric, yeah, older cards uh, were made with higher quality standards, right? It's actually really funny. When I was at the game store today, I was showing off some of the some of the proxies that I have. Not the ones that I got from the company from the video I put out, but from somebody else who sent me some. And the ones they made were basically counterfeits. They were really, really well made to the point where I handed them to multiple people. And they thought they were the real thing. They're like, this isn't a real magic card. I'm like, no, bro, that's a fake. I'm like, also, it's hilarious because this is a foil, right? Look, look at how flat it is. And they looked and I'm like, that's the giveaway right there. How sad is that? Literally, their, their, their proxy foils are too flat. They don't curve. Like in the new secret layer video promoting one of the, um, the upcoming solstice secret layers, the it's it's all done by the artsy chick so it's cool it's like on this log just got all the cards laid out check it out but you can see them all curled man you can see them all curled hack am i still confident in bloomborough after seeing the loot art the loot art was a little disconcerting to me but he's a stupid space baby that they shoved into this set. And while he is an animal, I don't think that he is indicative of what we're going to see in Bloomboro, right? My hopes for Bloomboro are more along the lines of that mouse soldier that we've seen, where she has the leaf shield and the little rapier and she's leaping across lily pads. That's, that's what I am hopeful for. So, like, I feel Bloomboro is, it's, e Bloomboro is the easiest set to slush art because you can just pick animals from any world. The only rule for Bloomboro is you have to be an animal, right? So if they show us people who aren't animals at all, that's going to be bullshit because it's Segovia rules where it's a planetary, plane-wide rule. The entire plane of existence has a rule that's magically enforced, and that is you must be an animal. That is no exceptions, right? I suppose you could make one exception to the rule if you specifically went like, this is the anomaly or whatever. And it's like, for some reason, this one person is cursed to be of a Dalkin or whatever. And it's like, what happened? Uh, the result of an ancient toad's curse gone awry, no one knows what to call this creature. And it's just of a Dalkin. You know what I mean? Like, that could be fun. Just have one person whose magic, the magic around it's so fucked up that it warped the magic of the plane. And so they're just like, they weren't even originally of a Dalkin, right? They just started out as like a pig or something. And somehow magic, chaos magic warped them into of a Vidalkin. That would be funny. That would be fun. But that requires an overall layer of consistency across it too, right? Game Corner, you thought Assassin's Creed set was going to be awesome, but it seems to be a disappointment. It's going to be a massive fucking ripoff, bro. It is an Aftermath style set that Wizards made before they realized that Aftermath style sets are rejected completely by the market. So what they're doing is you've got to pay a hefty price for the licensing fees. They're selling seven card booster packs where you're basically going to pay a buck a card. They went, we're cutting out all the commons. And it's like, you're giving me half the amount of cards. Correct. And the prices for the packs cost more too what yeah assassin's creed like if you're somebody who's super into assassin's creed and you like seeing all that stuff represented on cards you're going to be able to enjoy it and the mechanics that they have of some of the cards do feel like they mirror what's happening in the game so the mechanics are functionally resonant which is something i really appreciate i wish wizards would apply that to their in-world sets instead of just focusing on ub for that kind of stuff because that seems where all the effort is going. Thunder Junction's completely disconnected, but most of the Fallout cards feel like they do what they should, right? So when it comes to Assassin's Creed, 
the functionality of the cards will feel satisfying to people who are interested in Assassin's Creed, but the product itself is a giant scam, you know? No exception to the rule, like how there was no angels on Capenna. I love how in the written story they tell us there's no angels on Capenna. And then they have artwork with a, an angel on Capenna. And the flavor tag says, nobody knew she was there because she stayed really still. I wish I was joking, but that's that's what the flavor that, that's the flavor text they put on to fix it. Ah, uh, tens. You know what? That's an excellent point. Magic is hugely expensive as an entertainment option. Correct. You have a lot of different options. Like I said, infinite replayability, all in one box, less than like or the price of one collector booster. So. Magic used to be justifiable because cards would retain some value. Now Wizard undermines the secondary market so much. Correct, Tens. That's exactly what they do. They feel entitled to every secondary market dollar. But they all, like, they want you to not realize that at any moment they can drive any card to zero whenever they feel like it. And that you should just think whatever market price you see right now, that's what it's worth. And you should think that's what the cards are worth and buy it from us. Like, it's great. We can sell direct to you. It's, it's... It's ridiculous. Blake, collector boosters cost more than a plane trip from Texas to Colorado. Well, why take a plane trip when you can buy poorly printed curled rectangles that are all gritty? Bro, don't you want to get epic stuff like loot and the Simulacrum synthesizer? Yeah. Woo! Some, you're going to get some Assassin's Creed because your brother likes it? Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Volgar, there's so much product coming in. You don't know how the design team keeps up? Oh, it's real easy. They just lazily slap together crap and don't care about how unbalanced it is. There's no, you don't have to worry about balancing standard when you intend to just make everything for commander and lie to standard players and stuff and go, we totally care about you. Wizards got what they deserve with that shit. No wonder nobody plays standard in fucking paper anymore. Wizards makes the format unbearable, turns it into commander garbage nonsense, makes no products for fucking people who want to play standard to start with. So that's just, okay, what do you do? Get fucked. Buy a commander deck, asshole. Well, what about standard? Fuck you. Spend a bunch of money on arena and buy a bunch of standard boxes. Why aren't you doing it, guys? Why are nobody buying our standard boxes? Standard is three years now. It's insane. It's insane. Shotter, no. Uh, it wasn't just for Exigence to use planar portals in old lore. They were the most well-known, and they had a bunch of portal technology that they could traverse around with them. But uh, there's like, for example, there's dwarves on Old Grotha that got there through a magical portal. So Baron Senger, who's not originally from Old Grotha, he wants to get off of that plane. Because he was summoned there by a planeswalker. Because back in the old day, magic lore used to be fucking badass. Where you actually summoned these different beings up instead of now. Well, actually what you're doing is you're creating a magical construct version of it. Oh, well, I guess that gets rid of any kind of moral issues about going and capturing the, these things and forcing them to fight for you. Just so you know that little kid Pokemon shit has more balls than you, magic. No, we got to make sure that people who are playing the game don't think that they're actually summoning up alligators and demons and making them fight because it's just constructs i've never accepted that my fucking my acceptance is of the original style of planeswalker where it's like no i'm absolutely summoning up these fucking beings and when they die they're gone forever like if you needed four shiv and dragons you would have to travel to shiv and get four of those dragons and if you fought against some necromage and he used terror magic to frighten one of your dragons to death guess what you better head back to Shiv and hope there's more dragons that you can take because psh, that's it. That's it, right? So the Baron Sender got summoned to Old Grotha and stuck there when the planeswalker that was like had summoned him ended up losing and took off, right? So he knows he's like these dwarves aren't natives to this world. They came from somewhere. And so there's a magic portal. There is a planar portal somewhere hidden beneath a castle deep 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 in dwarven territory so no no the phyrexians weren't the only ones who had that kind of uh, ability
still, yep, you can you can definitely call them. They they are proxies. They they summoned up proxies. There's um there's the Gollum green green sleeve storyline that I may end up covering as well, depending on which direction I go with the lore. But those stories talk about different beings being summoned up, and like you know how your creatures heal at the end of every turn. Well, if uh, if the planeswalker is not around at the end of turn, there's nobody to heal these people. So you have like a two-headed giant, or maybe it was a one-headed giant. I don't know, but one of his arms gets lopped off, and the planeswalker jets before he can get healed. So this guy's just stomping around. You know, it's crazy. Eclipse, I've heard a bunch of people who play Commander say that. It's like, they've made Commander unfun by making so many Commander cards. <sighs> so yeah, the... Um the new lore version is way less cool, right? Summoning constructs is just, eh, eh. And it's like, so why can't these just be very, like, why do they, if, if I'm summoning a construct of a Shivan Dragon, why is it a 5-5? Five five? Why can't I just have, like, a modified 15-15 that has indestructible skin and whatever else? Like, this isn't a living being. You're just making it up, right? So why is it limited to this? Ex no, well, you got to scan them with your Planeswalker Techno Eyes and download the blueprint into your brain and you can only 3D print things you've seen. What? It's fucking stupid. It's stupid. Uh, Shotter, so the issue of Omen Pass, it, the, the Omen Pass are just wizards. Like, here's what happened. Wizards had Planeswalkers as the face of magic, right? Problem is, Planeswalkers can't be used as commanders. Commander's the most important format. It's everything to Wizards now. So, they want the face cards on commander decks and, and boxes and all this stuff to be the characters that they can sell and do whatever. So now it's all legendaries. That's why... That's why they did that stupid thing in the story where they went, the blind eternities got turned into Swiss cheese, so people ain't planeswalkers no more. So we can just have them all as legendaries, and they can be your commander. That's it. That's it. The Omen Pass by themselves aren't a bad idea. At first, I actually was excited for the idea of Omen Pass, because I'm like, wow, anybody can go anywhere. Think of the possibilities. But I thought of interesting possibilities, not just everybody comes to Thunder Junction to put on a hat, with no reason for it with no reason for it like what do most of these people get from thunder junction what do they get there that they can't get anywhere else right why is lazav the leader of the demir guild why is he on thunder junction and why has he been committing crimes as 15 different people don't worry doesn't matter you'll never know just look at the cool art and go cool so that's it, man. That's where we're at. Cauldron, yep. Yeah, it ain't integrity, son. You taint wrong. Oh, so yeah, I love old school magic lore, guys. So if you haven't, if you haven't gone over to my Fantasy Geographic channel and you haven't watched the first installment of the Thran, do it up. Better yet, go watch the fucking whole Brothers War storyline. That shit's great. Not the 2022 version. That one's so bad, I'm seriously tempted to delete it. I'm looking, I was looking back over the Fantasy Geographic channel. I'm like, I really did just end up getting pulled into the new lore. And it wasn't so bad like a few years back. But it's really, really, really fallen off. Markov Manor was a slog. And Thunder Junction made me quit covering the lore altogether. I was like, I ain't doing it. And then I was like, well, I do like old lore. So why don't we talk about that? And that's turned out fine. I got the Thran novel over there waiting for more attention from me. Doomblade Super Chat says, funny thing is, if Bolas came back now, he'd be considered a god. So technically got what he wanted by being in an empty realm doing nothing. Bro, I got, I got, I got news for you. There's nothing to stop wizards from making Nicol Bolas sparkless, right? Like, even if they just choose to ignore what they did before, they can just Nahiri him. Where Nahiri put her spark into a rock and then just dropped it. 
if Wizards wants Nico Bolas to be a legendary that they can sell instead of a Planeswalker, that's what they'll do. So. What's my fantasy channel? It's called Fantasy Geographic. I will get the link for you. Uh, oh my god, it's a Thunder Junction ad. <laughs> it's that stupid trailer. Alright. Here's a link to the first installment of the... Um, the first installment of the For Rise of Yogmoth and Phyrexia storyline. The Thran Chronicles. This is the first installment of the Thran Chronicles. And my intention is to cover the entire book. Because that's what I like to do. I know people do summary style videos, but I read through the entire novel and I don't read it back like uh, just like a audiobook version of the written novel. I tell you the same story, basically, just the way that I tell it. The details, though, I don't change the details. I don't need to. It's so good. When it comes to the new lore, I would have to change the details because they didn't make sense. And if I told you guys the way they wrote it, you'd be frustrated and angry. And the number of people who still felt frustrated and angry after, they'd just be like, what? But it's like, I can't tell you that Ren fell on the ground, laid there, and then fell again and was caught by somebody. Because you'd be like, but you already said she was laying on the ground. Yeah, I know. And I, I can't tell you the story is written because then you'd be like, who's Akira? You mean Akira from the movie? Who's Akira? Who is this character? No, it's Akiri. Like, I had to remove and fix elements of the story to make them fucking work and to be less obnoxious to listen to. But with the old school lore, I don't have to do that at all. I don't have to do that at all. I can just go, here's the story as it's happening. And Yogmoth, man, he's running straight out of the gates, fucking double elbow dropping the Thran Alliance like it's nothing. And from the point of the story that we've just finished there, we're jumping nine years back into the past. Still, yeah, bookmark that channel link doesn't have the same zing as bookmark that Amazon link. You're right. You're right. Burning Life, it was a great first episode. Cheers, bro. You thought Bolus did lose his spark when the zombie Ammon Kick Gods extracted it? My tip to you is don't expect anything that's happened in Magic Lore to apply to Magic Lore going forward. So, yo, I've got my hat on in a way where doesn't it look like it's photoshopped in? Like from this angle, doesn't it look like it's like painted on? Have I literally just transcended into pure Thunder Junctitude? Like am I doing it right now? Does it look like this hat isn't actually here properly and it's been superimposed? Because that's how it looks to me right now. It genuinely feels that way and it's making me excited like I'm the embodiment of Thunder Junction in this moment. I wish Cactus Boy was in the room to see me right now. <laughs> Eric, glad I'm back to covering the old magic books again. Me too. Oh, I'm going to mention this real quick, actually. The Fantasy Geographic patron, uh, Patreon. If you're a patron of it and you couldn't see the lore video when I put it up last night, that's because when I paused the Patreon for a bit, there was a little window of time where people didn't get charged. So basically, you didn't have to pay at all in March. All right? So... In April, it'll just charge you as normal and it'll all go back to normal. So if it seems like it's messed up, don't worry. I already sorted this out with Greg. He pointed it out to me and I took a look at it. It's probably not affecting a lot of people, but I'm mentioning it here on the off chance that people from Fantasy Geographic Patreon end up watching this live stream afterwards, which could totally happen. So, so yeah. But basically the amount of time I can dedicate to the lore will... Well, there'll be a number of factors that go into it, you know, because I mean, if the video doesn't get very many views and it doesn't make very much money, so I got to prioritize different things, but I also like the old school lore, so I want to carve some time out for it. So we'll see. We'll see. Right. That's how I feel right now. I'm excited about the idea of the old lore, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to fucking tank the almost no money that made fa that Fantasy Geographic made into no money at all. And... I can't afford to spend my time very much on that. So 
the pace of the lore will be dictated by stuff like that, unfortunately. It's the restrictions of the real world. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, right? Ah, yeah, you guys saw it. Nice. I'm glad. I'm glad the hat didn't look like it was really there. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah, exactly. Goblin gets it. You just go, uh, um, Omen Path opened up into the meditation realm and Bolas just walked right out even though he didn't have a spark, you know? Or he does have his spark. Either way. Skeleton. No, we didn't learn anything about the Atten at all in Thunder Junction. They are from some other plane. We don't know where. Wizards hired a cultural consultant to make Annie Flash, which is really confusing when, like, they're like, we hired a cultural consultant to make an indigenous person for this set, but there aren't any indigenous people in this world. So you're like, so she's just, you hired a cultural consultant to make a random person from a random world. No, this set has, you count as an indigenous because of how you look. It's like, this is the most blatant bullshit tokenism. This is what I'm talking about. It's just, it's corporate nonsense with nothing behind it. So, no, there's no meaningful building of what the Atten are, any of it. Because wizards, they they weren't, they weren't clear on what they even wanted to do. They knew they were afraid of being yelled at on Twitter. And then... 18 people went in 18 different directions with it and they just ultimately went nope nobody lives there nobody ever lived there ever except the people who are sentient that already live there but but what no but the, the cactus people just became sentient what about all the dragon scorpions hey shut up stop asking questions you know like <laughs> it's a lot of yeah can we just have money can we have the money money Rai Rai, the vault cards remind you what they did, the Transformer cards, all mythic. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Sick, you're Native American. Yeah, you're Apache, and you couldn't care less about Annie. It's, I mean, it's fine. Annie's like, whatever. At the end of the day, it just doesn't make sense why you would hire a cultural consultant to help you work on indigenous people who won't be indigenous. So they're just from another plane, which makes it a confusing and pointless thing to do. Like, where are you going with this? It doesn't, it doesn't add up, but that's, Wizards is just scrambling, trying to make money for Hasbro. And that's all that's going on, right? That's the entirety of it. Anyhow, that's it. That's it for today, my friends. I gotta fucking hit the dusty trail. All right. So, uh, what else do I have to say? Go watch the go watch that fantasy geographic lore for real, for real, real. Go enjoy it. Go enjoy it and boost my fantasy geographic view time slash numbers. That way, more people will see that fun lore and we can get it spread further. Hell, actually, I don't even I don't say this normally, but Share that lore around, man. Slap it on your Facebook and social medias and shit. Go, yo, if you like magic, check out this old school magic lore. Because that's all it is over there. You don't got to worry about fucking politics. You don't got to worry about anything that's going wrong with magic. It's just lore over there. And as soon as I started to move into something that wasn't and was stepping over that, I stopped it. I shut it down, right? I got rid of it. That's how it goes. So you can just enjoy lore there. And when I can't handle the new lore, it'll just be old lore. But it'll all be worth hearing because I'm the one saying it. Peace out for now.